Rachel's fingers gripped the steering wheel a little tighter than they should have as she glanced at her phone's black screen, the battery icon lifeless. Of course it dies now, she thought bitterly. She had always been terrible at charging it before long drives, and now she was paying for it, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, on a nameless road winding through the countryside. The sun was sinking low behind a horizon of barren trees, casting the world in hues of orange and deepening shadow. Her heart thrummed with the quiet tension of being lost, though she hadn't quite admitted it to herself yet. The hum of the engine was her only companion in the growing silence of the dusk. On a whim, she dug into the glove compartment and pulled out the dusty old GPS. It had been years since she'd used it, a relic from road trips with her parents back when smartphones weren't a thing. She wiped a thin layer of dust off the screen, flicked it on, and waited for it to boot up. The device chirped to life with a cheerier tone than she remembered, the screen glowing a pale blue in the dim car. Welcome. Please enter your destination. Her fingers hovered over the keys, hesitating. The nearest highway, that's all she needed. A way out of this back road maze. She typed in the name of a town she recognized, the closest place that might lead her to safety. The GPS blinked, thought for a moment, and then spoke in that upbeat robotic voice. Proceed to the next intersection, then take a left. Simple enough, she thought, exhaling as the tension began to drain from her shoulders. Maybe this wouldn't be so bad after all. She drove on, following the smooth, confident instructions, letting her mind slip into autopilot. But soon, the landscape around her began to change. The road narrowed, the asphalt cracking under her tires. The trees pressed in closer, their branches gnarled like skeletal fingers reaching toward the car. She noticed the occasional sign, half hidden by the encroaching underbrush, painted with faded letters in a language she couldn't quite place. At first, she brushed it off as some local dialect, nothing worth worrying about. But the deeper she drove, the more off everything felt. It wasn't just the road, it was the air. Heavy. Oppressive. The dying sunlight seemed swallowed by the thickening fog that crept across the ground, curling around the trees like some ghostly snake. Take the next right, the GPS chirped. Rachel slowed the car as the road curved. She craned her neck to see where it led, but the path was almost invisible, overgrown with weeds and brambles. Her instincts screamed to keep driving, to find another route. But the GPS insisted, its voice now sounding oddly mechanical, almost glitchy. Turn right. 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 She flinched at the repetition, swallowing the lump in her throat. Calm down, Rach. It's just a stupid machine, she muttered under her breath, trying to laugh off the sudden unease crawling up her spine. Her fingers trembled as she switched on the high beams. The overgrown path barely resembled a road, more like an old trail long forgotten by both man and time. Her tires crunched over gravel and twigs as she steered cautiously the fog now thick enough to blur the shapes of trees, leaving them as formless shadows. Her heart pounded, quickening with each mile, as if the world around her was closing in, slowly suffocating her with its emptiness. The GPS pinged again. Continue for three miles. Rachel's brow furrowed. She leaned closer to the screen, her eyes catching on something unsettling. The map. It wasn't showing a road anymore. Just a blank gray screen with her car's position floating aimlessly across it, as if it was moving through nothing. That can't be right. She glanced up, blinking into the mist. There was no sign of life out here. No houses. No lights. Nothing. Just the unyielding fog and the silent whisper of the wind through the trees. She considered turning back, but when she checked the rearview mirror, her stomach dropped. The road behind her had vanished into the fog entirely, consumed by the shadows. Proceed, the GPS repeated, as if sensing her hesitation. Her breath caught in her throat. For a moment, Rachel considered throwing the device out the window, but she shook the thought away, pressing her foot harder on the gas instead. Three miles, just three miles, and this would all be over. It's just a detour, she told herself. A creepy, weird detour, but it'll get me back to the main road. But the miles dragged on, stretching longer than they should have. The GPS offered no new instructions, just a constant, unnerving silence. Rachel's fingers twitched restlessly on the wheel. The shadows outside the car seemed to flicker, and in the edges of her vision, she thought she saw something move. A figure, maybe. Or a trick of the light. 
Her pulse raced as she blinked, trying to clear her mind. It was just the fog. Or the trees. Except... The trees were closer now. Too close. Their branches tapped against her windows like claws, scraping lightly against the glass. She swore the road was getting narrower, suffocating her in its grip. She stole another glance at the GPS, her stomach twisting. The screen had gone dark, save for two words that flickered at the bottom, barely visible. Turn right. Her hands tightened on the wheel as she looked ahead, scanning the road for another turn. But there was none. No side street, no hidden driveway, just more fog, more blackness. She slowed the car, her breath shallow, a prickling sensation crawling up her neck. Then, out of nowhere, the road abruptly ended. The headlights illuminated a tangled mess of weeds and dirt. No road, no turnoff, just nothing. Rachel's blood ran cold. Her breath came in ragged gasps as she stared at the screen. Turn right? There was no right. There was nowhere to go. And yet the GPS's voice crackled back to life, sharp and guttural now. Turn right. Now. Rachel's pulse raced as the twisted voice of the GPS echoed in the stifling silence, her mind torn between disbelief and fear. Turn right, it had commanded. But there was no right, no road, just an impenetrable wall of tangled weeds and brush ahead. Her headlights flickered, struggling against the thickness of the fog that seemed to swallow the light whole. She took a deep breath, forcing herself to think. The device had to be malfunctioning. It was old, after all. A relic from a time when GPS technology was less reliable. But why did it feel so intentional? So pointed? Like the machine itself had decided to lead her into this godforsaken place. Her fingers hovered over the power button. Maybe if I turn it off. She pressed down, expecting the screen to blink away. But it didn't. The glow remained, the words still there. Turn right. With growing unease, she pressed again, harder this time. Nothing. No response. Her heart sank. The GPS wasn't just malfunctioning, it was refusing to shut off. A sudden gust of wind battered the car, making it shudder, as if the very air was growing hostile. The trees loomed overhead, branches clawing at the sky like they were alive, desperate to break free of the earth that trapped them. A sound, a faint, whispering voice, drifted through the wind. Too faint to make out, but just enough to make her skin prickle. Get out of here. Her instincts screamed, but how? The road had vanished behind her, consumed by the fog, and the device, her only source of direction, was leading her further into darkness. With no better choice, Rachel gritted her teeth, gripped the wheel, and threw the car into reverse. The tires groaned over the uneven terrain as she backed up slowly, eyes darting between the rearview mirror and the void ahead. But the further she reversed, the more the road seemed to change. What had been a narrow gravel path just moments ago now twisted and buckled, morphing into something more primal, more wrong. Her rearview mirror caught the flash of something, a shadow darting between the trees. Her breath hitched, and she whipped around in her seat, eyes scanning the landscape beyond her car. For a moment there was nothing, but as the fog shifted, the shadows seemed to stretch, revealing the faintest outline of figures in the distance. They stood still, like statues, barely visible in the gloom, but unmistakably there. Rachel's blood chilled. Her first instinct was to dismiss them as tricks of her imagination, her fear playing games with her mind. But as she squinted harder, the figures began to move. Slow, deliberate steps, as if pacing toward her. Panic gripped her, and without thinking, she threw the car back into drive, tearing forward down the narrow path as her tires spat gravel into the mist. The GPS remained silent, its screen flickering ominously in the corner of her eye. She couldn't afford to look at it. Not with the road now twisting in ways that defied logic. Trees bled into the road, their gnarled roots cracking the surface like veins. Each turn seemed to get sharper, more treacherous, and the fog grew thicker, coiling around the car like it was alive, trying to suffocate her. The headlights cut through the mist just enough to reveal the remnants of a town ahead. Her stomach turned as she drove past the first signs of civilization, if it could even be called that. The buildings were rotting husks, sagging under their own weight. Roofs collapsed, windows shattered, and the walls were covered in a strange, oily grime that glistened in the pale light. 
An old rusted sign swung creakily in the wind above what might have once been a general store. The letters had faded, but Rachel could just make out the name. Willow's End. Proceed to the marked destination, the GPS chirped suddenly, its voice distorted, crackling through the speakers like static. Rachel flinched. She hadn't noticed it change, hadn't even heard the device reboot. Her knuckles whitened on the steering wheel as the street narrowed even further, the town's skeleton pressing in on her from both sides. The buildings seemed to lean toward her car, their decayed facades staring down like empty-eyed corpses. Her headlights flickered again, then blinked off leaving her in near total darkness. Only the faint glow of the GPS remained, casting eerie shadows across the dashboard. She slammed on the brakes, the car screeching to a halt in front of an old, crumbling church. The building was ancient, its stone walls covered in vines that pulsed like veins under the moonlight. The steeple had collapsed long ago, leaving behind jagged stones and twisted iron. A few rotting pews lay scattered in the front yard, half buried under dead leaves and debris. But what truly unnerved her was the door, a jar, hanging from its rusted hinges as if it were waiting for her. The GPS buzzed again. Stop here and wait. Her stomach churned. Wait for what? She muttered, fear creeping into her voice. Her breath fogged the cold air as her eyes darted between the shadowed ruins of the church and the still glowing screen of the GPS. Something about the command felt... wrong. Insidious. And for the first time, she realized, she wasn't driving anymore. It was driving her. A low hum filled the car, a soft vibration that seemed to crawl through the steering wheel and into her bones. Her fingers felt numb, the air thick and hard to breathe. The fog outside thickened, swirling in strange, unnatural patterns around the church. It was almost hypnotic. The whispering returned, louder now. Voices. Dozens of them drifting through the wind like a ghostly chant. She could hear them clearer now, but the words were distorted, tangled together like a language she could almost understand but didn't want to. A shadow flickered past the church door. Was it a trick of the light? No. She could see it now. A figure. Tall. Gaunt. Its face hidden in shadow, watching her from the church's entrance. Suddenly the GPS spoke again, its voice deeper now, colder. Proceed to the final destination. Her breath came in shallow, rapid bursts. Something was watching her. Something was waiting. And she was too far in to turn back. Rachel's chest tightened as she stared at the figure in the church's doorway, her breath barely escaping her lungs. The GPS's screen flickered violently casting a sickly glow across her lap as the distorted voice repeated, Proceed to the final destination. Her hands trembled on the steering wheel. She couldn't stay in the car, not with whatever was waiting for her, watching her. But stepping outside felt just as dangerous. Her mind raced. The GPS had led her here, step by step, into this decaying ghost town. Every road had been a trap, every direction a lie. And now she was here, at the edge of something dark and unnatural, where logic no longer mattered. The fog curled tighter around the car, pressing against the windows like a living thing, muffling the world outside into a dull, oppressive silence. With trembling fingers, she reached for the door handle. The chill of the metal bit into her palm. I can't just sit here. She swung the door open and stepped out, her boots crunching against the gravel. The cold air hit her like a wall, heavy and damp with decay. The wind carried with it a faint whisper, the same disjointed voices that had haunted her from the moment she entered Willow's End. Rachel turned slowly, her eyes scanning the ruins of the town. Buildings loomed around her like skeletal husks, their windows empty and black. It felt like the town itself was holding its breath, watching her, waiting. Her heart pounded as she glanced back at the church. The figure had vanished, but the door now stood fully open, beckoning her. Something about that building pulled at her, a deep, gnawing feeling in her gut that she couldn't ignore. She took a step forward, then another, her feet moving of their own accord, as if the very ground beneath her was dragging her toward the crumbling entrance. As she neared the church, a sharp gust of wind slammed into her, whipping her hair into her face. She stumbled, her hands brushing against the rough stone walls for balance. 
The door groaned on its rusted hinges, swinging inward with a slow, deliberate creak, revealing the shadowed interior. Inside, the air was thick, stifling. The dim light from the moon cast strange shadows on the walls, and the scent of damp rot filled her nose. The interior was as ruined as the outside. Rows of broken pews lined the floor, and the altar at the far end of the room had long since collapsed into a pile of splintered wood and debris. And then she saw them. Scattered throughout the pews were objects, each placed with eerie precision. She moved closer, her breath hitching as a beam of the moonlight landed on the first one, an old, rusted GPS device, almost identical to the one she had used in her car. Her heart skipped a beat. There was another, and another. Dozens of them, all sitting silently, their screens dark. Her mouth went dry as she knelt beside one, brushing her fingers over the cracked screen. The plastic was worn, as if it had been handled over and over again. And yet, it still seemed to hum with a faint, residual energy. Rachel's skin prickled as she rose to her feet, her pulse quickening. She knew what this was. These were relics, remnants of those who had come before her. Victims, led here just as she had been, their fate sealed by the same cursed devices that now lay scattered in this room like tombstones. She staggered backward, her mind reeling. The town wasn't just abandoned, it was a graveyard, a place where the living had been lured to die. The GPS in her hand buzzed suddenly, the screen glowing to life. Rachel's stomach twisted into knots as she looked down at it. The screen was blank, save for a single line of text. Welcome, Rachel. Her blood turned to ice. The device wasn't just guiding her, it knew her. It had been waiting for her. From behind, she heard the floor creak. The sound of footsteps, soft, deliberate. She spun around. Shadows shifted in the corners of the room, dark figures moving between the pews. They were human, or they had been once. Their faces were pale and gaunt, eyes hollow and sunken. Ghosts, but more corporeal than she had ever imagined. They moved slowly, their limbs jerking with unnatural stiffness, as though their very bones resisted the movement. Rachel stumbled back toward the door, but her body froze as the voices filled the room once more, louder now, clearer. They weren't whispers anymore. They were speaking directly to her. You're the next. We've been waiting. The shadows advanced, their eyes locked on her with a hunger that made her blood run cold. Panic surged through her as she backed toward the door, her legs shaking. But there was no escape. The figures crowded in around her their cold, dead eyes reflecting the dim light as they reached out with skeletal hands. Her back hit the stone wall. There was nowhere to go. Proceed to the final destination. The GPS spoke again, its voice as cold and emotionless as ever. Suddenly, the room shifted around her. The figures faded, and the church crumbled away like sand in the wind, revealing a new landscape. She was no longer in Willow's End. No longer in the church. She stood in the middle of a wide, desolate field, the sky above her a deep, unnatural gray. In the distance, she could see a single house, decayed and broken, sitting atop a hill. Smoke rose from the chimney, and she could hear the faint crackle of fire. It was the final destination. Her body moved, against her will, her feet dragging her forward toward the house. She could feel the pull now, stronger than ever. This was where she had been heading all along where they wanted her to go. The voices whispered in her ears, the wind carrying them like a song, repeating the same words over and over. You have arrived. She stepped through the broken doorway of the house, her heart pounding in her chest. The interior was dark, filled with dust and the faint smell of ash. And in the center of the room stood a mirror, cracked and ancient, its surface reflecting something that wasn't her. The GPS buzzed one last time. The screen, flickering as the words appeared. Welcome home. 